Hi 108. Here we are sitting at week 13 and so I'm plucking through three last units here in our textbook, unit 22, 23, and 24. And there just are a few pages in each unit that I would recommend using to supplement your practicing here at the end of the semester as we're getting ready for that proficiency. So in unit 22, I would suggest taking a look at the sight reading on page 279. It gives you two great sight reading examples in minor. They both are very typical of what you'd see on the proficiency. Uh, don't worry so much about the pedal on number two. Pedal won't be part of your sight reading on the proficiency. But two great minor examples. If you are a vocal emphasis, I would suggest transposing these as well, up or down a third. If you turn the page and go into page 280, you've got two great harmonization examples. Again, doing some minor again, both of them using Roman numeral. These are two great examples to take into as many styles as possible. Certainly do melody chords in the left. See if you can take it into a broken bass. Can you take it into an Alberti? take a look at the second one. I would definitely would try maybe doing a waltz bass. I would try putting it into keyboard style. Great one for that. So again, try to do as many different styles. We're trying to get you as fluid in as many different styles as possible to help with that one week prep on that proficiency. As you move into unit 23 on page 287, it's a nice explanation of seven chords. I am hoping that you've covered these in theory, but it's a nice explanation and a review of what's the difference between a major seven chord with that major seventh above your root versus just a C7 chord, which we've learned is usually a minor seventh above. What if it's asking you for a C minor seven? What about a C minor seventh with the minor third? What about diminished seventh? So it's a nice review and explanation. Again, helpful in your sight reading for recognizing patterns, seeing chord structure, thinking that big picture. There are uh, two pages in unit 23, again, worth looking at that are utilizing seven chords. We've got some great sight reading examples on 289. And then on page 292, you have three examples of uh, harmonization with seven chords. You're not going to find too much more than just your basic seven chord harmonization, but this would be a good challenge. And if you're having a hard time distinguishing what type of seven chord they want you to use, come with your questions. This is something we can talk about in class or happy to meet with you outside of class. The last bit of information that I'd like to glean from the textbook here for you is the chromatic scale on page 297. And 297 just gives you a nice look at the keyboard. Remember, a chromatic scale is playing every key right in order. Chromatic scale fingering is very simple. Your thumb is playing all the white keys. Three is playing all the black keys. When you come to a double white for those half steps, two is going to help out. It's always in an Ascending pattern, you're never going to have an X. And then back to three, one, three, one, one, two. Left hand does the exact same fingering. Thumb on white, three on black. Again, when you get to those two white half steps, make sure that you're not making an X, but it's going ascending, two, one. So fun to practice with. Once you get the hang of it, it's fairly easy to go quick. You've got some fun little examples here that you can try with it. So as we end our work in the text here for 108, these are just a few pages that I would suggest taking a look at in these ending units. Best thing you know that you can possibly be doing is as many examples as possible of sight reading and harmonization. Make sure that your piece is getting polished up. And remember that this week's quiz, quiz 10, is individual transposition. So whatever transposition style you are required to do on the proficiency, there is a PDF posted underneath week 13 that has all three types on it. So please submit the type that is specific for your degree.